I'm flying from Half Moon Bay to Monterey Bay, Monterey um, Regional Airport. So first, let's adjust some things. Uh, set the heading mode. Flight director on. Um, I am going to want a flight level of 4,000. Okay, so that should be enough. Um, I'll eventually want nav on. Go ahead and turn that on now. <coughs> okay, so take off the parking brake and we're ready to go. Okay, getting a little bit of wind pushing us around. Um, using my newly adjusted pedals seems to be doing a good job. Okay, I think we can lift off now. Try to keep it below 10%, around 10 degrees. Um, seems to have a pretty good airspeed. Usually when I take off, it's not quite this good. I haven't actually taken off from half a bit before. Uh, okay, and we're going approximately the right direction. As soon as I get enough altitude, I'll s kick into autopilot mode. Um, Approach JTS 167 is now. type Cessna Skyhawk, one mile southeast of Kilo Hotel Alpha Fox Drive. Request flight following. Alright, so he's going to get us perfectly back on track. Squawk 4702, JTS 167. Once we're going the right direction, then I'll do the flight level change. Up to 4000. Looks like we're flying into some fog. That's uh, something I haven't done before. With the Garmin, though, it should be. Copy JTS 167. Uh, does seem a little scary. Alright, so now what I want to do, we're going awfully fast. Guys, we're holding an holding altitude, so I need to slow down. Um, what I'm going to do is get slow enough and then turn on the flight level change. Okay, so now we'll start pitching up. Give it some power. And it's got a speed of 104 knots, but I don't want to ascend that fast, so we're going to drop it down to uh, 100. I'd rather go way down to 82 or something. Okay. So we should be on a good steady course. Uh, let's see if we some more power as we go to 82. Alright, so now it should be um, climbing. Looks like it is. Excellent. You can see the coastline there below the fog. Okay, altitude was way off apparently due to the barometer, that's interesting. I heard it say 500 earlier when we were apparently at 700 and something feet, so that kind of makes sense. Okay, so we got about that little bit of fog. It's kind of interesting seeing the city or the village and whatever uh, underneath the fog. My super performance limited laptop I've managed to render that actually pretty good. So we're continuing to climb. And plan to go to 4,000 feet and then hold for a while and then descend into Monterey. 
We're going to go over land for most of the first half of the flight and then water for most of the second half. Uh, if I go up to the VFR map, you can see here uh, the part that's on land and parts that's over water. All right, so now that we're steady, I'm going to uh, switch to the drone and put it in. And then let's check the um, lock mode, which is what I want. Okay. I need to get an Xbox controller hooked up for this, but for now I'm just using the keyboard keys. I love the reflection off the water. That's really pretty. I kind of can't believe my little HP laptop is managing to keep up with all this. Um, it's an MX350 NVIDIA GPU and I'm overclocking at about 50%. I have a NVIDIA uh, 2080 coming in a couple weeks, so visual quality should improve greatly. Um, for now, though, this is working fine. This looks very pretty. Oh, there's somebody. Interesting. Flying in an A320 new. Kind of cool looking at the fog. Um, this just seems very realistic when I've driven along Highway 1. Um, looks very much like what you'd expect. Okay, so I'm going to switch off the drone and check my instruments, check my speed. We have 82 is what I asked for. Okay, I'm going to slow it down um, just a little. I'd like to keep it below 80. So let's go. 79. Okay. We'll um, ascend fast enough at that rate. They ought to put uh, kite surfers in, because you can see them if you're driving along the coast sometimes. But I doubt they did that. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly where we are now. Um, I don't think we're quite in Santa Cruz County yet. I think it's still San Mateo County. I love the way the fog is hugging these areas. It looks also very realistic from my experience. My co-pilot is handling all the power traffic. Just adjusted the barometer and it caused the plane to be a little bit. Must be a busy traffic area. Oh, you can see the ocean off there to the right. That's really pretty. So it's nice when you're inside the cabin, you can use the mouse wheel and zoom in, look around, get details on things. Um, autopilot G1000 Garmin autopilot gives you a really nice smooth ride. Um, I was curious to see if that's a real product. Of course, it is a real product. I think the base price is $30,000 and 
there's two of them in here, so um, I suppose one can take over if the other craps out. I'm not really sure. There's something over here about display transfer or reversion. I don't know. Anyway, who knows? But uh, yeah, they're expensive, but they're very nice. I think if I was an actual pilot and I was going to buy a plane, I would definitely want to spend the extra money to have that system. But I have no intention of actually doing that. So this will take a while. Be a great time for a pilot to stop and have a cup of coffee or eat a packed lunch or something, um, catch up on the news or read a book or something. Um, there's really not much to do except just keep an eye on that airspeed. That's the most important thing. As soon as we hit our target altitude, which is soon, uh, it's going to level off and we'll start uh, accelerating so I'll have to pull back on the throttle and get us back to a nice under 80. You should see it leveling off in a moment as it reaches 4,000. First clue will be the airspeed going up. Look at all the sand, sand dunes on the hills. That looks, again, very realistic from what I remember. Rich blue green of the forest, very pretty. Okay, so now I need to give it some power. Um, I guess the wind change. Okay, so let's try to keep it below 80 a little bit. That's a pretty shot. With the sun shining. Okay, we're being directed to a different frequency. a nice move, 4,000 feet. I'm going to slow it down a little bit, but it needs to be going this fast. A lot of people playing off in the background. Haven't really come close to anyone. I've seen a tag whiz by on the screen all of a sudden. Um, but no near misses or anything. So we're certainly dropping, so let's give it some more power. I think uh, wind changes direction to these hills, so we have to compensate for that.
I don't know how to pan the map properly. That's all right. I'll put the range back to figure these things out over time. I don't tend to pay attention to this one unless I'm just staying inside looking at the instruments and want to check progress. Or if ATC says there's a plane nearby, I'll look there for it. A uh, nice view looking up over the dashboard. Really looks very realistic. Um, you know, squint your eyes a little bit and you can't really tell it's not just video from an airplane. So I suppose once I um, get mostly over the water and get towards the other airport, I will start um, descending. Let's see. Yeah, so maybe I'll start descending as soon as I enter the water, head down to 2,000 for the landing. Don't get a lot of detail with my graphics card, but if you're just flying along and not looking at the detail, it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, it would always be nice to have a nice, clean, crisp image with lots of detail. Yeah, so the airport is just directly across the water, Monterey Bay, um, from that point. I don't know how accessible any of these hills are or if people use them for stuff or what. They don't seem to be inhabited. Um, oops, okay. Let's reset the view, go outside. I want it to look down. That's where that's what I would do. Okay, I do see some roads, maybe a few houses, so not completely devoid of light. Going a little fast, going to slow us down a bit. We'd like to keep it 79 somewhere down there. That was the surprising thing I learned about autopilot is that it's not controlling the throttle. Um, I don't know if that's universally true. But um, it does give you a lot of control over what's going on. Um, you, know, you can delay an ascent until you're ready by failing to push forward on the throttle. Uh, there's certain modes I have never actually tried. Uh, I think there are like three dimensional navigational modes or something. That automated altitude changes. Um, I don't think I don't think a system like this supports ILS. I was trying to land in um, Sonoma last night and I guess because of the smoke due to the fires it was ILS or it was um, IFR both taking off and landing and so when I got to Sonoma, I had to abandon the flight because I couldn't figure out how to comply with uh, ILS. I don't think I've got that on this. Or if I do, I don't know how to use it. I'll have to, fi I'll have to find out. Um, now on a larger plane, like an A320, you can find something, you can find references to ILS, and I've seen somebody use it successfully. But 
do not think that exists. So yeah, I just Going to one, two, six decimal, four, seven, could not five, actually JTS, land. One, six, kind of crazy. I may post that Normal video. Normal approach, JTS one six seven four thousand feet. JTS one six seven normal approach continuous. So we're just continuing to stay in touch with the tower at Monterey. Haven't been to Monterey in person for a while. It's a very nice place. It used to be more fun. Uh, there's not as much stuff to do there now, but um, the aquarium is very nice. So we're not too far from the water. Starting to drop a little bit in speed. I can take care of that. Trying to get better at listening for the speed change. The clue is there, you just have to kind of listen for it. Um, I usually catch it in time. Some of my early flights, I would find myself stalling and then have to go scramble to speed the engine up to stop it. Um, so I want to go to the map. Okay, yeah, we're not too far. So that's of course the co-pilot, the automated AI yeah, co-pilot talking back and forth in the tower. Um, I wonder if we're going to speed up or slow down as soon as they get over the water. Of course I'm going to start descending. I feel like the air would be more calm over the water because it's flat. But we'll see. In fact, I can go dial that in now. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it's set to 4,000. Go down to 2,000. A little tricky to use these things, and you don't want to be trying to do this while you've got a flight local change happening because I've accidentally gone down 1,000 or, you know, below sea level and suddenly the plane takes a nosedive while it's trying to comply. So 3,000 is not what I want actually, I really want 2,000, there we go. Alright, so I'll engage that as soon as we get uh, over the water. Um, so the way that works then is whatever speed you're going at when you engage it, it assumes that's the speed you want to keep going during the descent. Uh, so if you're still going at 82 or you know, whatever that speed is, it can't descend, it can't, uh, it doesn't have a way to push up to 82. You have to drop the throttle back, then it'll descend, gain speed, and be able to comply. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it makes sense when you, when you start playing with it. Uh, go a little fast, I want to slow down mid 70s for it engage the descent. You can adjust the speed from the control also, but it's just easier to get the speed where I want it when I start the operation. Okay, we're close enough to change, so let's go over and just make sure that that's ready to engage. Um, Obviously we have nav on, and that's on, just um, Okay, well maybe I just have to drop the engine speed. Let's see if it uh, pitches up. I didn't turn it on. I thought it was on. I thought it was reporting that it was on. Okay. 
you're going to get to the controls. It was not going fast enough as it is. Um, I told it I wanted 58. No, I want to descend at uh, say 79. There we go. Okay, so now when I drop the engine, it will comply by pitching down, hitting 79, and then leveling off a little bit and continuing our descent. Okay, there we go. I should keep the engine going out a little bit. Um, but as you can see, it's trying to comply with 79, trying to get down to 2,000. So it's got those two goals. Be interesting to see what the pitch looks like from the side while this is happening. Probably can't really tell it. Oh, it does look like it's. Forward. Okay. That's cool. Reflections of the water. Wow, that's really cool. Okay, I love that. Alright, so we're now uh, completely over the water. Um, tracking back on over here. It's not much to do here. Or see, I guess we can still look at the countryside over here. Oh, there's Santa Cruz, okay. The enormous specific ocean. We're not high enough to see curvature of the Earth. It does look a little curved here, but it has to be optical. We're not even near or close enough to see the curvature. All right. So as soon as we hit 2,000, I'm going to need to power up the engine to maintain as we lose potential energy. And then it's just a trip over the water. Um, I assume it's a nice straight landing and not a lot of turning. I wonder if you can see the boardwalk. Hmm. You'd think you'd be able to see the Santa Cruz boardwalk from here. Um, I mean, it's obviously going to be super low res, but you'd think a, um, a roller coaster or whatever would be noticeable. I don't see anything that looks familiar. It could be past that fog, maybe. I don't know. Um, although that's past Santa Cruz, so I don't know. There should be boardwalk somewhere along here. Okay, we must have reached altitude, Stop. yet we're stalling and wasn't paying attention. Stop.
Yep, that's what happens when you're not paying attention and just looking at all the pretty sights. Um, I found it pretty easy to recover from stalls. I've never recovered like this before using the autopilot. I'm kind of surprised it didn't disengage. Um, but you could usually take a dive and quickly get airspeed going, uh, get your lift back. We're still going too fast as far as I'm concerned. What altitude are we at? We're around 2,000. Okay. You really have to watch the airspeed. I, I mean, maybe the biggest mistake I always make is failing to constantly check. Um, but it's getting easier. A little, more, a little less than 20 nautical miles from the Monterey Airport. Gonna give us a little bit more power. I have boats and stuff turned off. I suppose we'd probably see something if I didn't have that turned off, rather than just a completely empty sea. Uh, it was nice to see that the Garmin was able to figure out how to recover from the stall um, once I applied power to the engine. So all I had to do was just apply power. I was getting ready to take over if I had to, but um, that seemed to be a good job, so that's nice. Very calm, smooth day. Um, just the, the plane is just not bopping around at all, which is very nice. And look at how smooth. Zoom in and just not getting a lot of uh, a lot of bounciness. I see something wiggling over there that looks like it's related to the uh, airport. Looks like a sequencing set of lights. So that's probably what that is. Nothing to see out that way or that way. Wow. Way off in the distance, you can see something. There's somebody uh, flying. I sometimes see people who don't seem to be moving. I think they may be actively paused. I don't know what would motivate somebody to remain active pause for a long time. Uh, maybe taking pictures or, I don't know, some other kind of fun, but I see that sometimes. So again, this is a good time to, you know, pour another cup of coffee out of the thermos, eat a cookie or two, get ready to land. Um, heading towards Sunset, it looks like. Uh, let's see. Don't know how long until. Well, we got quite a ways to go. Okay. Uh, there's probably a way to tell the time here on, on the equipment. Four twenty nine. Okay, yeah, makes sense. I'm just amazed again at how smooth and stable the flight is. It's like there's no wind. 
the water's gla you know, glassy, so that kind of kind of says the same thing. You can actually move around quite a bit in this cabin and look around at stuff. It's kind of interesting. Um, I've been able to, you know, maneuver into the back seat of the A320 with uh, moving, the th moving the internal view around. It's kind of interesting. Get rid of that. You can actually turn the heat on. I think, I think if you're trying to do a super realistic flight at high altitude, uh, you'd need to turn those on to avoid, you know, freezing to death or something. So that's interesting. Oh, a mic jack. Okay. Uh, oh, that's for the telephone or the microphone or whatever. I kind of wonder why they do the trim controls like this. I've seen these before um, on other planes, you know, these enormous wheels, and you often see them rotating um, just like that, I guess. Okay, with the autopilot. Anyway, oh, yeah, it's, I'm hitting the wheel, it's trying to rotate. And yeah, you gotta be careful zooming in and out because you might actually be c trying to control something with the mouse wheel. Um, it's nice that there's the backup instruments. Um, I kind of wonder if this is also a backup. I don't know if this can be switched to the mode that that one's in. You know, I don't know if you can fly the plane on this side, but I'd like to try sometime. But it's nice to see, you know, old-fashioned backup instruments. Uh, I think this is all fuses. Yeah, those are all fuses. Um, magnetos. I'm not sure when I would need to do Dr. anything with those. JTS one six seven. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. One thing I forget to do is to uh, turn on the proper lights at the right time. I've got landing lights. Cleared through Charlie um, airspace. JTS one six seven. We're not quite landing yet, but I'll. Um, I'll just leave it that way. I'm getting really close. Um, so we are at 2000. We're going 77. I'd like to start slowing down just a little bit. Monterey Tower JTS 167 is 1 1 miles northwest with golf to land. JTS 167 Monterey Tower. Make straight in runway 10 right. Altimeter 290 decimal 75 wind calm. Okay, adjust the perimeter. Fly straight in runway one zero right JTS one six seven. Oh wow, it's right over there. Okay, so I'm gonna have to take over and steer us into the pattern. Autopilot off. All right, so I'm gonna give it some power and then get us over there. The landing pattern is red because I'm going too fast. Um, once I get the hang of this and learn more about some of these airports, I'll probably turn the landing guys off, but I find it very handy. It would be nice if the heading would lead you to the mouth of the pattern rather than directly to the airport. I'm always having to make these turns. Um, might have to take over flying a little earlier from the uh, Okay, so going fast enough. Let's uh, burn off a little bit more speed and then soon we'll be entering the pattern. I just cannot believe how nice and calm the wind is here right now. 
Might want to bring that trim down a bit. Left over from autopilot. That'll help. It's kind of hard to do that and do everything else at the same time. Okay, that's right, better. Alright, so if we're getting at speed, I'm going to climb a bit, burn it off that way. Try to get it to the level of the mouth opening, which is usually, uh, well, it says 21, 12 feet. Flying really forces you to kind of slow down and be patient and not do things hastily. And that's nice though because it uh, ends up being very relaxing. Uh, it does take a long time to land usually because you have to go so slow. Um, Still trying to get my altitude up to the mouth opening. I don't think you have to be that high, but um, I'd rather enter at that height for you now. So I'm uh, gonna try to actually climb up there. And Now the calm wind might change. Oh no, it was calm going the other direction before, so I think we should be okay. And calmness wise. So run off. Try climbing. Just want to get myself into the pattern at the right altitude. Alright, well that's good enough. All right, so as soon as I'm stable in here, then I'm going to put the flaps down, slow down, and get ready to land. I don't think there's a turn at the end. Um, but we'll see when we get the flaps down. Throttle down. Trying to get below. 60 ideally, which uh, is getting really down there, but it's doable. I need to not descend too much. I'm not going to worry about going too fast for now until I get down there. I don't like that I'm descending so quickly. But I think I can find a balance here. Okay, so now we're down in the preferred speed range. And it seems like we're holding, so that's good. So this is where the patience part comes in because you can't speed this process up. Alright, so climb to slow down. Yeah, it's scary because you're just above the stall point all the way towards the end and then you've got to get closer and closer to the stall point the closer you get to the runway and then I guess you know landing is actually stalling um, 
so yeah, it could be a little scary. It's easy to see why real pilots need a lot of practice. You know, flying over these homes and businesses and think you don't want some amateur crashing the plane out of stupidity. Um, the stall point is going to be that white line, 40 knots, with the flaps down. But I don't like to get too far close to that. I'm not super familiar with how the wind patterns change as you get closer to the ground, but it does seem like it changes a lot the closer you get. I'm kind of surprised sometimes by it picking up or slowing down more than I would expect. Uh, so I guess ground effects and stuff I'm really not familiar with. Um, So we're going to climb to eat up that extra six of speed. And so we're on a good path right towards the runway. Um, we just have to keep checking our speed in order to be fine. Uh, not getting thrown around by any side winds. Just a nice, smooth entrance to the runway. Right um, my frame rate's dropping dramatically as there's more objects in scene as to be expected. Hopefully it's not going to crash. Um, I think it'll be okay once it finishes some kind of rendering process. So speed-wise, we're doing good. Um, then stall. Frame rate's starting to come back a little. Um, I found that flying at night is actually a good way to uh, avoid frame, frame rate problems because I guess you know, dark areas don't need as much rendering. That's going too fast. Try not to stall until I have to. Okay, this is better. Wow, you're coming, you're coming low over all these buildings and stuff. At least I am. I'm probably not supposed to be this low. But this should work. Just above the stall point. Starting to feel some windiness on the ground. Yeah, this feels like it's going to be okay. Alright, so now we're going to try to stall the plane. Hold off as long as we can. Oh, there we go. Nice. No bounce. Oh, that was an awesome flight. Uh, there's our taxi guidance. Flaps up. Alright, let's uh, taxi to our destination. I've never been to this airport before in real life or in the game. Um, I'm sure I've driven by it. JTS exit it really pays to go slow when taxiing. Oh wait, ask me to go that way? Okay. JTS contact ground on one two zero decimal. Oh, to contact ground. All right. One two zero decimal. Uh, the copilot won't do everything. Oh wow, something going by. 
but then he got out of his way. Copilot won't do everything in terms of the ATC when you're on the ground, so some of the stuff you have to actually do. Um, come on. There we go. Tune to Monterey Ground. Press. Right, I'm on the taxiway. <laughs> Request taxi to parking. Alright, now I can taxi. Supposedly. I don't know, someone's gonna... Alright, I'm gonna get my ass out of here quickly. never supposed to taxi this fast, but I want to get my ass off off the taxiway and it keeps telling me where you're going. Okay, use the right pedal to slow down a turn. Let's break. But I'm going too fast to do that, okay. Alright, I'll just go around this guy. Supposed to press taxi to park. Monterey Ground JTS 167 taxi to parking. Okay, that's what I'm supposed to go. JTS 167 taxi to general aviation parking by taxiway cross runway 10 right Bravo. Oh, wait. I must taxi be to general aviation parking by using taxiway cross runway 10 right. right Bravo JTS 167. So we will go the new way. Uh, maybe this is a busy airport today or something. I'm not sure where those guidance lines are. Oh, now they're there. Wow, it just keeps moving them around. That's crazy. Um, Alright, well, I will attempt to comply. Short turn here. I'm just gonna cut it. JTS one six seven hold position. Caution other traffic. Caution other traffic. Hold position. Okay. JTS one six seven continue taxi. Oh, continue. All right. Roger JTS one six seven. I'm still getting used to this ATF stuff. ATC stuff. Not really sure why it kept changing, but it does seem to be there does seem to be a lot of people around here that maybe using this airport, so um, it's probably changing what's available. Okay, there we can slow this down. I don't know why there's a car in the path, but I'll just go around it. You see my parking spot down there. Oh, they have my path going through a, you know, some kind of a vehicle. That's weird. Alright, so we'll do the right brake and do a nice sharp slow turn. Um, does the pavement, looks like the pavement goes down here. That's interesting.
always the complaining about the oil pressure. And then turn everything off. And that's it.